Welcome to Understanding Gradle. In this video, we will talk about a concept you can use in Java development called Feature Variants. Feature Variants allow you to split up one component into multiple features that can then be optionally selected by consumers of the component. We will first look at a practical example of what this can be used for. Afterwards, we will explore which Gradle core concepts are used to create feature variants, because they actually don't add any new core functionality to Gradle, but rather use functionality we already learned about and conventions. So in the second part of this video, we'll explore what happens in the background when you add a feature variant. We'll learn how this relates to source sets, configurations, capabilities, variant-aware dependency management in general, and publishing. But let's start with an example. In our example project, we have the data model component as a Gradle subproject. So far, this project only contains some data classes. We now would like to add functionality to serialize and deserialize the data. Because this is closely coupled to the data classes and nothing else, we would like to have it inside our data model project. But we have two additional requirements. First, we want the serialization code to be decoupled from the data classes. So, that in places where serialization is not important, the code is not visible. For example, in our business logic component, which only needs the data classes, but does not need to know about serialization functionality. Second, we want to have the option to implement different serializers and have a consumer choose one of them. For example, a JSON and an XML serialization. First, for separating the code, we can use additional source sets as we learned about in the previous video. In our convention plugin, we create a JSON and an XML source set. In the build Gradle file of our data model project, we can now define dependencies only for these source sets. We want to use JSON to implement our serializers, so we add the corresponding dependencies here. Note that as I mentioned in the previous videos, these are completely separated now from the dependencies of the main sources. We can now go and implement the serializers in the source sets. Because we want to have two alternative serializers that can never be combined but should be easily exchangeable, we implement exactly the same class twice just with different internals, one time using JSON functionality and one time XML functionality. Because the serializers should serialize and deserialize our own data classes, they need to know about them. So what we can do in the build file in addition to the JSON dependencies, we can add dependencies to another variant of the project. So thinking in terms of feature variants, you can say that each project already has a main feature variant that you can just depend on with a normal dependency. That's the variant you get in all the dependencies we already have. So here we say that the JSON source set sources should also depend on the main variant of the same project and the same for the XML source set sources. So far, this works already by just creating a source set. Now, we also want the possibility for other projects to depend on these additional variants. Because they are just source sets, which are just internal to the data model project for now, they are not visible to the outside yet. This is where the feature variant concept comes into play. A feature variant is registered on the Java extension and is always based on a source set. So you can look at that as something that you add on top of the source set adding more information on it so it can be consumed by other components. We register a feature variant for the JSON source set and for the XML source set. Registering a feature variant sets up quite a bit of things in the background. We'll look at the details in a bit. For now it is enough to know that registering an additional feature variant in a project means that the project offers additional variants to other components that depend on it. So if we want to use these additional variants we need some means to select them. For this, capabilities are used again. I explain capabilities in more details in my video on capability conflicts. There can always be only one variant selected in any component that has a certain capability. Gradle can select multiple variants of the same component or the same project if they have different capabilities. So when you register a feature variant, the variants that are added to the components get different capabilities than the main variant which each component has. So we now want to use one of our serializer implementations in our app project. For this, we add a new dependency to our data model project 
in the app project's build gradle file. In this dependency declaration, we also say that we require a certain capability, which is either the JSON or the XML capability, which Gradle automatically named after the name of the source set. When this dependency is resolved, Gradle will look for a variant with that capability and select it. Behind this variant, there will be a different jar file that contains only the code for the corresponding serializer. We now add some data files that our application can read at runtime and adjust our implementation to use the deserialization functionality of the feature variant we just added in the dependencies. If we run the app, we can see that it prints a message that was read from the data file, in this case the JSON file. If we go back to our build file and change the dependency to the data model to select the XML feature variant instead, we can see how now the XML parser is used without touching any of our code because both implementations are treated as alternatives that implement the same public API. Because these are alternatives and we don't want to allow both of them to be added, there's one more thing that we can do. As explained in the capabilities conflict video, if two variants have the same capability, Gradle won't allow them to be on the class path together. And we also saw there already that one variant can have multiple capabilities. So in our feature variant definition, we are also allowed to define capabilities manually. Since we won't get the default capability set up anymore when we do that, we have to define the JSON and the XML capability ourselves respectively. And then we add a second capability to both of our feature variants. We call it serialization and add the same to both. So if I now attempt to combine both of these feature variants, which are alternatives, Gradle will fail with the capability conflict on the serialization capability. So if we have seen the feature variant concept is closely connected to source sets and to capabilities. In our example, we used capabilities for both, allowing additional optional features as part of the same component that we already depend on and providing different implementations of one API where Gradle will check that we only use one of them. While the capabilities are quite visible because we have to know about them to define the right dependencies, there is more setup done in the background when registering a feature variant. But all of this could actually be done using public Gradle Core API without using the register feature concept of the Java extension. Let's do this to understand how feature variants are only a pattern to use Gradle's variant aware dependency management, which you could tweak in different places if feature variants don't fit your use case completely. So let's not register our JSON feature variant, but just create the JSON source set. From the previous video, you might remember that the source set already provides a lot of information that we can use to set up additional things. This is what the feature variant in the background also uses. So we'll use the source set to get names for things which we will now create or register step by step. The first thing is that we need a jar task for packaging our classes. Don't forget to give it a classifier so that it has a different name than the main jar file. The jar file takes the output of the JSON source set as input. So with this, we already have an artifact that we can share with other projects. Sharing artifacts between projects is covered in my video on aggregating custom artifacts. So if you have trouble following the next steps, please check out that video. As we have learned there, to share artifacts, we need so-called consumable configurations. The consumable configurations represent the variants of a component that are visible to the outside when other components depend on it. They are distinguished by attributes. These are the same for every feature variant. So the attributes we define here are the same that our main variant has. Then we bind the artifact, so our jar file, to the variant, aka the consumable configuration. Next to the artifact, a variant may have transitive dependencies. These are added by referring to a configuration for dependency declaration, like the implementation configuration, through the extends from keyword. Since we only used the implementation scope in our example, I'll leave it at this. The register feature variant setup will follow the whole configuration pattern setup, including API, runtime only, compile only, compile only API configurations, as I have explained for the main variant in the video on declaring dependencies. But this shows that you can do a more individual dependency scope setup 
for your own variants or features if needed. And then we also define the capabilities here directly on the consumable configuration, which corresponds to the definition we did when we registered the feature variant and added our own capabilities there. The last step, which is not necessary if we don't care about publishing, is to register our additional variants for publishing. For this, we get the Java component and inform it that there are additional variants in terms of consumable configurations. See my video on publishing for more details on this. If you indeed publish a library with feature variants and care about other build tools like Maven using it, you can tweak here how the dependencies of the feature variants are represented in the POM files. As the POM files do not support the concept of variants and have hardwired dependency scopes, it's common practice to represent such dependencies as optional dependencies, which is just informal data for the consumer, which would then have to add the dependency itself. If you and the consumers of the library only work with Gradle, you won't have to care about this part. This shows how the register feature functionality does a lot of conventional setup for you. But you are free to do this manual setup if you want to tweak certain things. In any case, our example works the same as before with this setup. Thanks for following along. Maybe this helps to get a better understanding for all the different use cases that can be solved with Gradle's variant aware dependency management and why it therefore comes with a certain level of complexity. The example we talked about should give you some ideas where feature variants might be useful in your code base. Even if you don't see useful cases in your production code, additional source sets and feature variants are also very interesting for structuring test code or test fixture code. These are things we'll talk about in the next videos. If you don't want to miss it, subscribe to this channel and see you next time.